I called Jorge Ventura Walter Cronkite, and I don't even know who Walter Cronkite is. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I'll just roll with it. I don't know. I was like, hey, man, this man is the future. Uh, make sure y'all stay tuned for that. And we 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 spoke about the atrocity and the tragedy of what happened to the community in Uvalde. And boy, when we went to church yesterday, bro, the prayer hit different. Like, yeah. <laughs> Every make y'all could go look it up. It's uh Second Baptist and then just type in the date, Second Baptist Church. But man, bro, it was just, you know, m- on top of that Memorial Day and mm-hmm. everything. Crazy world. This is RPT. I don't even know what season number. I don't even know what episode. Yeah, you don't have number. any yeah. Um this, maybe you could say it this yeah. time. It is episode well actually. Today's uh this will drop on Thursday, June second, twenty twenty two, the year of our Lord. That's it. Yeah, man. Heavy stuff. We have another guest for y'all today. We had uh, Mr. Sanders from Sanders Tactical Performance yesterday. Jorge Ventura today, obviously. We're going to do an intro for that. But uh, this is, like I said in the episode, the first time you and I actually talk about this. Mm-hmm. And no better person than Jorge Ventura, who has been in in the, in the mud of all of it, trying to figure it all out, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know if I ever really processed this story, because the twins go, they mm-hmm. were about an hour and a half from that school, at their <laughs> elementary school. And it's like, I think I've been completely avoiding really processing what could have been yeah. an hour and a half from where they were. So yeah. anyway, we'll just try to keep it light because uh, it's, been, it's been rough and it's been pretty, pretty crazy to think about. But um, mm-hmm. we are here today. We had a fun episode yesterday. You finished your media light. Yeah. And um, I like how Trump read the names. Yeah. And they did the bell. After each name, I think I think at his NRA speech actually. Oh, is that that must have been where yeah. it was? That was his last speech, yeah. Yeah, and I heard him giving some good points and solutions, mm-hmm. and and again, you know, unfortunate thing is all this has got politicized. Everyone wants to, you know, own the other side. Like, well, it was your guy and your governor yeah. didn't do this, and it's on him. Do something, and then you see the bots get weaponized on Twitter. And they try to uh, steer the conversation and be like, do something. And I literally had to tell about four, maybe about four people, or I don't know what they were, on Twitter. Hey, man, prove you're a human. Upload a short video saying, hey, Chingo, keep an open mind, bro. You know, I'm not a bot. Yeah. And hang up, upload the video. They couldn't do it. But all of them had like a Latino face in the picture. All of them were like, ah, cabron, he wants to have, uh, he's making demands. Like he wants me to prove I'm human. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. If you're using the same talking point of like, do something. Like they, the bots, yeah. the bots were trying to make do something stick. Yeah. And on Instagram, they're not even getting that clever anymore because the bots, what I figure are bots, because you can't believe anything. It's like, we've all been so... Whatever it is, man, whether it's uh, psyoped into believing that we can't trust anything. Right? Yeah, or even, yeah, exactly. Or a new study shows, like, oh, I guess I might as well assume the opposite. Right. So the, the, that's, the slippery slope has already become a complete mudslide of just. You don't know what nothing. to trust. Right. So the, the, what I was going to say is that they're getting so, like, they're not tactful about it because all the people that are trolling right now on Instagram that I'm seeing have, no, it's just the egg. There's no picture. They have one follower and or yeah. one post, and that's new, it. Yeah, new account, private. Yeah, right always trolling yeah uh yeah so like i said um the gun debate gun reform like we need to take up all the ars and it's like okay well bad guys and criminals don't obey laws and what about all the ghost guns and you have an open border it's all kind of guns everywhere and you're just gonna take them away from the good guys yeah man i'm gonna pull this up real quick um so ladder with crowder i I love watching their show when i get a chance to watch the live stream and i'll go back and watch them but they did one the day after this happened, and um, in their show notes, they were, you know, doing their due diligence and had a bunch of myths and facts about guns and gun violence and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I kind of want to go through a, a couple of them and just see, you know, what your your thoughts are on it. But uh, there's a claim and then the truth to the claim, right? Mm-hmm. So the shooting is a fault of the gun lobby, people are saying, right? Okay. And their, their truths were that there was nobody from the gun lobby uh, shot anybody and nobody from the gun lobby. They're, they're far less influential than the leftist portray so the like what heaven Ventura said the left is going to rally and, and bring and fundraise so much money way more money than any gun lobby mm-hmm. is probably going to put towards any election or any person right they're going to use it for their political mudslinging right um and that's that's nothing compared to what when you think of the left too what big uh, conglomerates and lobbies do you think of what oh groups? ready you want to hear give me like three that you huh. think of okay and you might be like those aren't lobbies um okay you got abc mm-hmm. <laughs> 
ESPN. <laughs> they just name out the name. I mean, You're right. You're not I wrong. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, Steve Kerr. Right. Um, everybody trying to, uh, I mean, Beth O'Rourke running up in a damn press conference where we're trying to f- get some information. Dude, this is on you, bro. 19, bro, this, this, this do something. You, you, you need to do something. And it's like, you have your sick son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. Come up in here and it's like, some people are saying it's too soon, but the time is now. The time to take action is now. And it's like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Beto, let us mourn. Let us figure out what the hell really happened. Yeah. Who propped the door? Where the kid get the money from to buy the, all that stuff? You know what I mean? Something about a pickup? You know what I mean? Like, what? who was the picture of the guy talking about he was board attack the border tactical people okay what about the other guy from the barbershop you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. like and we're going to talk about that with jorge ventura yeah but i mean you got pharmaceuticals being the number one so 356 million dollars that they put into you know elections uh claim to we're the only country where this happens not true el salvador uh jamaica honduras way more of these events happen every year than the united states but you never hear about it right you mm-hmm. just never it's always america's the leading you yeah know. that's a big meme from the left it's like tell us t- uh, no one needs an ar-15 that's why this only happens here and it's like what uh we are not the country with the most mass shootings per capita even among first world countries such as so the death rate per million from 29 uh, 2009 2015 was norway number one uh serbia number two uh Macedonia number three Macedonia the, Macedonia and the United States is number 11th mm-hmm. so yeah nowhere near number one if you really think about yeah, it yeah but when you're a, a progressive liberal soccer mom and you occasionally get on Facebook or whatever um you can get influenced by memes that are like oh that one made perfect sense to me it's like because that's the one you saw and it persuaded you it didn't it didn't factor in like like for example some people they when it comes to this debate they'll be like well, nobody needs them kind of rifles and, you know, um, yeah. they just need to make more laws and those are weapons of war. Those are assault rifles and, and so on and so on. And it's like, okay, well, bad guys don't obey laws, number one. Yeah, no shit. When they're not worried about gun-free zones. You know, schools are a gun-free zone. That's, that's supposed what to be a positive that, thing? I know. That's what a criminal would love to see. Exactly. So somebody did, I don't remember who it was, they did uh, like a... Not not a man on the street, but what they did was they went to homeowners, kind of like they were canvassing and saying, "Hey, uh, you know, we're very uh, anti, you know, get gun, you know, guns, get guns off the street, you know, ban assault rifles, so on and so forth." We're we're hoping that the the neighbors, the neighborhood, would try to uh, rally behind this message and put these signs in your front yard that say, "This is a gun free zone. Free zone, bitch." And you know what they all said? They're like, "Oh, we're we're behind you 100, percent but uh, we can't put that in our lawn." And they're like, "Well, why not?" Oh, you know, you were basically. You know, and they're like inviting intruders. It's like, well, yeah, of course. We're just like telling them, hey, come take our stuff. And like, oh, okay. You know, and isn't that what schools have? You fucking dummies. Isn't that what schools have? Yeah. Like gun free zone. So that was one of the funniest videos I saw because, and it was home after home after home. Very nice people they seem like. Man, where is that video? I'll, I'll find it. I don't remember who posted it, Maybe, but I'll find okay. it for you. Maybe we'll put it on the what did he say page. Yeah. Um, but there, there's tons of them. There's lots of other claims and truths here on, the, on that particular episode. Uh, it's the show notes for school gun control um let's see here's another one trump made a good point he said why don't you see this type of stuff happening at inner city schools he said because they're very secure they got metal detectors because they're in rough neighborhoods and they know they got to beef up security just in case uh assault weapons are to blame uh 59 percent of attributed are attributed to handguns and only three percent are attributed to rifles of any sort so handguns way more you know dangerous or deadly in this particular stat than anything else uh, banning high capacity magazines uh, doesn't stop mass shootings is the truth. Um, states with magazine bans: New York, California, D.C., New Jersey, Colorado. Things have happened there way more than other cities. Mm-hmm. And the list goes on, man. I mean, Jorge Ventura is going to break a lot of this down in the episode. I just kind of wanted to. Did they mention the one about like when they pull up statistics, when they lie to you with statistics, right? Because mm-hmm. that's the main, that's one of the main things statistics are for. Yeah. Is to be able to lie to people. You just pull out a little thing like, oh, greatest economy ever. Look, we just had a little blip. Yeah, amongst a 40-year Biden high. created more jobs than any president ever in history. Yeah, a 40-year high of inflation, and it does a little blip. And it's like, oh, look, progress. Oh, whatever. But, oh, did they have this stat in there? The amount of gun deaths, they also include suicides. I boom. And so the amount of gun deaths. That way you could be like, look at how many gun deaths. And it's like, yeah, but mm. they're not all going around even shooting other people. Right, right, right. I do remember hearing that one. It was like homicides versus murders versus something else. Hold on. I don't think it's in here. Yeah. It's just a, it's a weird time. Like on top of, we have to acknowledge like 
fatherless home, godless society, just a hedonistic, uh, the way Steve Bannon said it, he's like, these kids, they, they start pumping them up on pills from the time they're little. He's like, they sit them in front of screens. Uh, next thing you know, they just, you know, you just have them locked up in a room, no social skills. They giving them all the video games and porno and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, they got them on the Prozac. They got them on this. And it's like, well, this you're, he basically was saying like, you're making more of these types of people yep. where, where's the dad? You know what I mean? You got to be accountable. You got to. Here, check this out. This goes perfectly. We have saying. also, very importantly, got to deal with the problem of broken families because no law can cure the effects of a broken home. There is no substitute for a strong mom and a great dad. It has to be said. Yeah. They, the left tries to dismiss that every time. But while we work to address these deep, complicated issues and deal with this scourge, all of us must unite, Republican and Democrat, in every state and at every level of government, to finally harden our schools and protect our children. This is what he says, it's not about money. I don't know if he finishes it. What we need now is a top-to-bottom security overhaul at schools all across our country. Mm. Yeah, he goes on to say that though. Great, he? yeah, great speech. Yeah. I mean, his 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 uh, speech writers killed it with that one because, you know, he made some good points, and um, it's just unfortunate. It's a, it's unfortunate this time that we're living in, where it's like you got some really sick, deranged people out there. On top of that, you have a lot of lies swirling around. On top of that, it's getting politicized and people getting divided. Well, Y'all went from arguing about abortions and like, well, third term and 28 days out of womb, 10 month old and all this type of stuff. Y'all went from talking about abortions and Ukraine and this and that. And boom, everybody jumped on. All of a sudden, people, tick, 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 tick. here come the soccer moms with the, with the Bob strollers. Like, oh, yeah, well, uh, uh, this is why. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's kind of like like the NPC memes of just like they're downloading, they're assigning you a thing. And especially if you're partisan and you don't want to hear about a debate. That's what I like. This is what I like about the right, bro. Okay. And I just never really... You know, I just never really, I guess, was engaged in terms of like really seeing the logic of each side. But one thing I will say about the right is a lot of times when it comes to debates, they tend to use logic and I dare say facts. Yeah. And I say facts only because, you know, these days it's like, well, what is a fact? It depends on how you look at it and this and that. But, you know, like like what Officer Tatum said, like they're printing ghost guns, the border's open, and you just want to think you could just snatch up all the guns. You're not going to snatch up all the guns. You're just going to run up in the ones that the government, you went about it the right way, and you're on a list, and they know what you got. You know, th those are the people they're going to be focused on. And then, and then the debate about like red flag laws. Like, okay, does that mean somebody can say, hey, my neighbor, the little Mexican guy with the podcast, he seems to have a lot of guns. That's a red flag. You know what I mean? So now you got them people in my mix. Yeah, true. You want to have them folks in my life. The little Mexican guy with the podcast. You know what I'm saying? The little Mexican guy got a flag out there. He got a couple flags out there. So you know. A little brown face of white supremacy you over know, there. You know, he, you know, he ain't on the gun-free zone. Yeah, what's crazy too, man, among all the other things we've talked about on this show, is that just in, in the last two, three weeks, we went from uh, abortions at a death con eight or nine or whatever the fuck the phrase is uh -huh. two it's completely out because of this tragedy and now everybody's rallying behind gun control and that subject itself from the jump people were saying it's not moving the polls it's not doing anything but here we are anyway making a fuss about it for a month well the the the, the meme uh i cut you off you no no fine. go ahead okay so like i saw a meme that said Y'all went from saying, we must arm Ukraine. Ukraine needs their Ta, guns. Yeah. Ukraine needs their guns. And in record time, you're like, no one needs a gun. You have no reason to have that gun. It's like, y'all were clapping when Zelensky was passing out them, them, th them, them big ass fishing poles. Mm -hmm. The chopper. Dude, uh, have you seen the China videos lately? More and more. Just of these beating the fuck out of people. Beating the fuck like, out bitch, of people. Bitch, you're positive. Dragging you're them. positive. You know what I heard? I don't know what theories you've heard. I heard. Let's make some up. Let's go. No, this is what I heard. 
Put your tinfoil hat. Get, go get a dozen tamales, uh, rajas con queso, take the foil off, mm. wash off the grease, put it on your head. The rajas con queso you, you know made, man. Bro, I never had them. I've never had them before, ever. That was the best shit yeah. I ever had in my life. Yeah, yeah. Um, but hit it. Some people, some people do cream cheese. So we might, we might try them. That wasn't cream cheese? No, no. That was a different kind of cheese. No, no, no. But uh, all right. So check it out. Um, What the fuck was I saying? Your theories. On yes, China. yes. I heard this. This is what I heard okay. about the China thing. <laughs> yeah. I heard that they're prepping for kinetic war with Taiwan, South China Sea, Silicon Valley West, mm. microchip uh, Mecca right and uh they're getting ready to take taiwan and supposedly the theory is they're getting all their citizens in line to to understand the kind of sacrifice that we need for a united front like shit gonna get kinetic we need everybody down there in the south on this region to be ready for this and that like I think they made an announcement to all their citizens. I forget when it was, but like, that's the theory that they're letting them know, like, bitch, either you down with us or you ain't because we about to set it off right now. I don't. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. I can't say that I haven't, but I have also heard that, you know, not to expect any kind of hot war <clears throat> with all this information going around. Like, why press for hot war when you have a country like the United States kind of just demolishing itself mm -hmm. due yeah, to exactly. information from the inside like let's take yeah. it slow they've been taking it slow for a hundred fucking years like what's a couple more decades and another style um of the type of warfare the uh, hybrid warfare unrestricted warfare they do is even colonization meaning we slowly gonna get up in there and we just little by little colonize start owning buying up um also some people say like they're all up in canada and they buying up all that shit up there in Canada and they're working with the cartel right beneath us in this open border. You know what I'm saying? They're killing Americans with fentanyl. They control all the media. You know, they're able to chime in on your movies and what kind of art gets shown in y'all's theaters, mm -hmm. the culture. Uh, they own the big one of the biggest social media apps. You know, yeah. they can have your kids falling off milk crates just at the push of a button. <laughs> <laughs> no, my miss. Uh, they can challenges. amplify a, a trans discussion. They can suppress, you know, whatever. They can get you riled up, help get you riled up over Ukraine. I wonder how many, I've just been thinking about this lately, like what percentage of Americans are really politically engaged where they listen to a podcast like this or they listen to information, even if it's like mainstream media, like it's something that like is on a regular routine, a part of their, you know, whatever, their everyday that's life. A, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. So when you, what do we have, 350 million people, something like, something that. like that in this country? Mm -hmm. uh, there was a 2020 Gallup poll that showed it was about just percent wise uh, political parties. I think it was, oh, here it is, 31%. Of Americans identified as Democrats, 25 identified as Republican, and 41 as Independent. Right. So you take that total of those people. Is it half? Is it three? You know, half of 350 million? Is it a hundred? Is it only a hundred million? Well, you got to factor in like how many of them folks are like just kids. You know what I mean? Like you got to delete that amount. Like, but if they can vote, they're still politically engaged, right? That's yeah. So don't. So out of the 300 whatever million. Oh right, right, right. Some of them just aren't even whatever. Um, man, I'd argue that it's small. I, I think so too. And my point was going to be is that we're, a lot of this is relying on the backs of politically engaged yet uninformed Americans. It's not like everybody, if, if everybody was on game with what's going on, you would have this 25 identified Republican, I think would be like 80, to be honest with you. They'd be ultra mega. They'd be American It'd be ultra, because, ultra mega kings and queens. Yeah. Because I think, uh, just the fact that a big portion of the GOP is full of shit. Uh -huh. and their establishment and their swamp and they are ready to do a lot of the same stuff the democrats want to do um that's why a lot of people get that oh it's an illusion of choice they haven't discovered ultra mega <laughs> they don't know there's an option out there called ultra mega america first like we don't even rock with the rhinos big dog have been discovered ultra mega. yeah you over there thinking all like 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 for example with gil uh american cholo I, I don't know. He might start starting to realize that like, oh, all the GOP, everybody on the right ain't the same. Like anytime I'm going into uh, like an interview, like let's say the Ghetto Boys podcast, Ghetto Boys Reloaded, where it might be one of those things like, or even a radio station where it's like, so recently you were made some controversial. It's like, what's controversial? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like strong dollar, America first, like bring back the jobs. It's almost like you could start with the question, like you could start with this scenario when someone asks you anything about that and be like, because I've been thinking about this too. Like, okay. There's a spectrum, a political spectrum. Mm -hmm. If we looked at it and said, where has the country moved in, in either direction over the last 
two or three decades. It has progressively moved to the left altogether, right? From right to from extreme right to extreme uh, far left. It all together has moved to the left. Okay, so if you took it from that perspective and said, put a put put a uh, any kind of uh, problem proposal on the table, who's going to react to it with a more analytical, reasonable kind of method? Anybody that's in the middle right to right. <laughs> Yeah, because they, they, they come used from to the left. Se- they used to be center. Right, so exactly. Like, whoever used to be in the center is now ultra right. They're like alt right. <laughs> Pretty much. You a little they they look at you like a Nazi that needs to be punched in the face just because you think like everybody else got a border. Shouldn't we have one? Shut the fuck up. You're Islamophobe, <laughs> transphobe. One of the one of the what do you said Paige's biggest videos or reels is one where I forgot what the video at the front of it was, but at the end of it it ends with that kid where it's like, Wow, it's a magical place, right? And the oh, catch one was like the way leftists look at America or oh, the way yeah. leftists oh, look word, at the world. Word. Okay. It's got I think it's got millions of views. Oh no shit. Well that's how people I feel look at a lot of stuff. Like there's no there's no wrapping your mind around like, all right, taxes come from people's real money. Economics. You know, death actually happens. Uh, people are missing, you know, things that they need, shelter, food, whatever. But it doesn't, but it's rooted in like a, a feelings and a ha yes. and a yes S- and a sub- fairy tale. Yeah, postmodern, subjective. Nothing's real and everything's yeah. fake equity. and everything's everything. Equity. What is equity? Yeah. Hold on. Uh, y'all over here are too busy trying to sell white supremacy is the biggest problem and we need to be in Ukraine. And it's like, for example, minorities and, and you know, regular average americans it don't matter if you black brown yellow whatever they're like what's up with the dollar what's up with this gas price How, is it gonna hit six dollars in houston mm-hmm. is it uh let me know you know what i'm saying what's up with supply chain like what's up with the you know the economy uh the border you know things of that na- inflation things of that nature dude gas hits six dollars in houston and i'm gonna turn into j cole sell my car and get a fucking bicycle Man, my boy Frank was telling me like how much uh, public transportation he be doing because yeah. like his office is downtown. It's all downtown, yeah. But he lives like way, way up north, and it's mm. just, he's just like, yeah, I'm, I'll be on that. Really? <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like, when I go to other cities, I, I enjoy their public transportation. He's like, I might as well have start getting familiar with ours and mm-hmm. just look at how our city is. Um, uh, how, what's the word he used? Basically, like, n- how well is our city laid out in terms of like? Um, getting around navigatable i would say not very well <laughs> if i had a guess i mean the traffic sucks but yeah. but but anyway the, the point i say that to say this <laughs> my point is this the left keeps trying to like you're oppressed and, and you know this is uh you know equity and you know with the uh, marginalized and you're being oppressed and no and it's all this like no no guns and this and that and it's like no give away more money print more money whereas that's why people need to be more well versed with basic economics yeah. of like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's talk about supply, demand, the price, uh, free trade. You know, is the government going to start rationing shit? Are they going to try to do price controls? Like, what are, what have been the long term effects of rent control? Because a politician could use that against you and just be like, the rent is too high. I'm going to set a thing, and then it's like, do you know the ramifications of that? Um, it's entirely too high. Yeah, like people, like for example. Some folks in the community who are in in the show business, they might be like, oh, my God, Beto O'Rourke, man, great job, bro, for, for calling out. You know what needs to be done? It's like you're getting emotionally riled up because it's children. Mm-hmm. We are like just I wish we didn't even have to discuss this through the context of politics and spin and propaganda and all this stuff we like to talk about, fake news and the right and the left and it is. I wish it, you know what I mean? We wish this did not even happen. It, we shouldn't even be talking about politics with this. But you get people that are like, they get stirred up because it's like, oh, we need to do something and it's those goddamn, who, they like those goddamn Republicans and those damn gun-loving people on the right with their damn American flags on their front yard. They want to be, it's their fault because they want to be selfish, Rob. They don't want to wear their mask. They're anti-vax. They're pro-gun and they're super selfish. And that's why people died in COVID. That's why mass shootings are happening. That's why the Las Vegas thing happened. That's why this happened. That's why Columbine happened. That's why this parkland that's why santa fe and they and they will read them the politicians they memorize them they'll be like buffalo yeah you know the time was after sandy hook the time is now to do something and the crowd goes wild because you're dealing with emotions and like 
a parent's worst nightmare and you weaponizing that. And that's that's really the unfortunate thing. Yeah, when you look at uh, Drew Hernandez, who I hope to have on the podcast in the near future, he he covered a couple of, uh, I mean, from Beto to the, the I think the abortion stuff here recently, but there was a video of, of him or of his Frontline show where he's got the people pro set, pet testing and they're like, Fuck your God. You know, this, that, and the other. Have you seen this video? I, just, I saw the one when he trolled Bethel. When he was like, was, beta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He there was like, the parents didn't want you and you vowed it. Yeah, there was that one. And then before that one, there was another one. It had to have been, yeah, it was. It might have been the NRA event too. He might have also been there. But either way, the, I see those people that are just screaming at the top of their lungs. One of them looked, it was as big as a hippopotamus. Like she was just, you know, just a terrible looking, I just got to say it. She was terribly looking, sounding uh, just like an, like looking like a really mean person. And she's like, fuck your God. Even if you don't believe in God, like for fuck's sake, like what, is that's where you're going to go out there and protest and just yell that for hours? Yeah, you can rob when you're that. Of course not. I'd be so like, she, hey, let's <laughs> leave the door open to possibilities here. So she's, she was anti-gun? Is this yeah, it was, I believe it was all anti-gun. But these people, my point was, I say that to say this, the people that are rallying behind these messages are, they're taking the bait on the it's an emotional subject they're, they're charging it even more you know hypercharging it emotionally and then they go out there and they make a bunch of noise but i don't really i i'm still not convinced that there's that many dumb, in my opinion dumb people you know what i mean i think there's more logical americans that are like hang on a second they're like jorge said there was a hundred a couple hundred people outside of the nra event right okay Houston's fucking ginormous. There's a lot of intelligent Houstonians that aren't going to fall for mm-hmm. Dora the Explorer's fucking rhetoric on mm-hmm. why money should go to a George Floyd statue or or misappropriated for COVID versus yeah. anything that makes sense. So do you think the people that are out there are not gun owners? Do you think maybe they own guns and they just want a little bit of reform? I think a few of them are legitimately not gun owners, but I think a lot of them have a weapon. So, so I think this is what happens when you have a culture of multi-generational victimhood victimization like like if you just scream loud enough the squeaky wheel you know what i mean if you just you know it's not enough to protest you have to get angry you know it's like get in their face and like punch a nazi like so who's a nazi then yeah a real nazi like a skinhead like i need to see a swastika tattoo on you big doc (laughs) you know what i mean like uh um it's like it's like if if some of these ladies that are out there protesting, the same ones that want to defund the police. So you want to defund the police and you want to give up your guns. So who's going to have the guns now? Just the bad guys. Like have they not thought through like the long-term ramifications? You know, if they would just empower themselves, maybe go take a class with uh, Sanders, yep, tactical performance and educate yourself and get empowered Maybe you'll look at the debate different instead of just being so partisan all the time and being like, my side likes to kill babies. You know what I mean? Or yeah. in the womb. Um, what else? Uh, 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 we got to send money to Ukraine because I love Ukraine. Yeah. These motherfuckers. Oh, I love I love Ukraine. Like the NPC meme to me is so accurate. Because, oh, yeah. Because they're literally like, I'm anti-gun. Why? Well, because, dude, there's been mass shootings. And it's like. Okay, so what happens when people get stabbed? Do we, what do we do with those? You know what I mean? And don't let Kim Kardashian run you a little okie doke talking about she's against some guns and shit. Her kids go to the safest private school, private school, and when they show you the um, the uh, like the elevator pitch on video, like to be like, this is why you should attend here and pay all this tuition. We have armed security guards and like super one way in, one way out, whatever, like or whatever emergency exits and this and. The cameras, like Second Baptist, they're building um, a new, a new like kids center or whatever, and straight, straight up, <laughs> straight up, S C H, straight up, K, only one K, dog, one K, slow down, don't get banned. Is, we ain't Democrats. We ain't doing all three. <laughs> um, when they were talking about like raising the funds and the millions of dollars and this and that, how they they about to break ground and pour the concrete, they're like talking about the state of the art security they're like one touch one button shut it down and the why because it's second baptist yeah. they don't want they want to hear what are y'all doing to help keep the kids the kids safe so we don't get no atrocities was evil yeah. coming up in here i'll leave you with this and then we'll get into the second half of the podcast which is an amazing interview with jorge ventura uh tim dylan had Giannis papas on his podcast and they were talking about this trying to make light of it and obviously Uh, continue their uh, comedic show but at the end of it tim was like look it sounds like what america has done it has has poisoned its citizens is filled them with porn it has made them addicted to drugs and it has made them develop one of the biggest mental health crises we've ever seen yes uh, uh, all accurate in my opinion yes and the the porn rabbit hole 
boy, there is an account that Sam Tripoli retweeted. Uh, I'll find the lady's name, but she's like an activist, bro. <sighs> Dog, there are some facts there. We'll get into the Jorge Ventura because that, that might be a whole other episode. Yeah. But, but basically, how much human trafficking, revenge porn, uh, underage stuff, um, uh, like either like chicks that are passed out, like the pimp, a uh, homeless chick, like a bunch of, a whole bunch of stuff of like abuse Jesus. and, and how I think some of these websites, they didn't start cleaning up their act until MasterCard and Visa. And then we're like, Hey, y'all charging people for these memberships. Can y'all acknowledge that whatever gets uploaded is like consent and legit and not like you putting up camera, you know, just yeah. whatever. You a poor, you a, uh you a creep. You got an Airbnb and you putting hidden cameras in there. And mm-hmm. She talking about uh, uh, uh. Um, that that I guess some of these websites had to delete like eighty percent, damn, of their stuff because they were like, oh shit, we got to go into crypto now, to, or we're gonna go out of business because people starting to raise hell talking about what all exactly y'all got on here and how do y'all know that everybody's of age and yeah. everybody's consent and all that. So Tim Dillon hit the nail on the head we cannot like like people like jack posobic mm-hmm. he's very catholic uh you know obviously people like steve bannon they're on the right donald trump even said something about you can't undo the fact that you need a great mom and a strong dad yeah right people on the left have to start acknowledging that instead of raising their millions stepping over you yeah. know what I'm well they belittle that point the most i think because they'll be like well you're, you're gonna bring up the, the nuclear family again or like all oh, into this republicans are blaming doors and video games ladies and gentlemen they're yeah. blaming rap music what's next and it's like it's, fuck. it's like no tim dylan and like how trump said about the parents and like fatherlessness like i have a um there there's a you could look it up but there's a statistic of like because i don't want i want to get yeah. into the Jorge Ventura, but there's like a list of like kids are more likely to be this more likely to have this more likely to have a rec- criminal record more likely this with fatherlessness when there's a lack of a father you're more likely to end up in jail you're more likely to be a dad too young you're more likely to join a gang you're more likely to get in trouble i mean use your imagination you the left is going to have to acknowledge the culture and how like like tim Dillon said you you what was it how do you say it? you give them all the porn yeah you give them all the porn you fill them you make them addicted to drugs you give them poison food poison food and you create the biggest health crisis ever and 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 i'm gonna say this and i'm done the type of um the type of like alpha mindset like tough times make strong men like mm-hmm. we we want to cover things like survival and being you know preparedness and keeping an eye on supply chains and the economy and the price of diesel fuel what's that what that will do to the price of food like how long can you survive off the grid on your own like i used to make fun of motherfuckers like bro you got a tourniquet in a in your bug out bag like <laughs> you got a first aid this and you know and now i'm like hey man where you get the tourniquets at you know what I'm saying? How, can you keep a little backup blood, like some fresh blood? Like, you know what I mean? Like, how do you? Is there a filter? To how you pump water out the ground? How you do that? I'm a city boy. I don't know how to do none of that shit. But the alpha, the ma- bring back masculinity, like the the type of shit that we be on. Some people get triggered, like, oh, Chingos, he's trying to push this alpha shit now. No, it's the fact that if you're gonna be a dad. What do you want from your kids? You have experience. Like mm-hmm. you, you was at the club. You were turning up. You mm-hmm. were up staying up late last night. Like, how do you? How, like, I don't have sons. I have daughters, but I still have to mold them mm-hmm. to be up on game. Like, like, uh, uh, just to be, you know, you know, everything from talent stack and and staying out of trouble and everything else. But we have to acknowledge the culture and the parenting. Hundred percent, man. And I think. Uh, Things that we try to do on the show by talking about it, have a guest on like Jorge, are heading in the right direction, at least in my opinion. It doesn't seem like a lot to some people. You're like, oh, what do you do? Like, we talk about it on a show. We have people on. We spread awareness for it. You know, we try to, you know, move certain causes that help. And they're like, all right, that's all you're doing. But motherfucker, that's a lot in this in today's world. I mean, you know, the power of podcasts is that, um, I mean, some of y'all might be listening to the sound of our voice right now in 2024. Yeah. Some of y'all might be like, okay, there's a lot of issues and I'm starting to think that like every time something happens, whether it's the baby formula shortage, there's always like, well, I heard it was because of the plant and Sturgis and well, I heard the Bill Gates and I heard that and you never, ever know. People are going to start to catch on like, oh, I'm a combatant in information war. Like they're just 
pushing us and pulling us and swaying us and dividing us. Meanwhile, the one of the people that they're saying are evil, like Trump, he might actually say something that makes sense from time to time if you just keep an open mind. Yeah, that's why a lot of, if you're new to the podcast, that's why a lot of the, most of the titles I would say for the last, you know, year and a half now aren't uh, date specific. They're not like dated with like stories from that day because a lot of the stuff we talk about isn't just like news from that day. Mm -hmm. This is kind of evergreen where if you are leading up to the yeah. 2024 election and you're listening to this episode with Jorge Ventura, uh -huh. it's still very prevalent to what's happening in the future. It's not just today's stories. Like the news cycle moves so fast that to be one of those news shows where you're just talking about the news from that day, it gets a little, little stale, a little dated. But if you're talking about evergreen shit like this, they're going to need alpha males in 2024. Yes. They're going to yeah. need to be prepared for this shit in 2024. Yeah, these are like concepts of like like for example you you know why one of the reasons i i really admire um uh fuck thug nasty bryce, oh bryce mitchell yeah. bryce mitchell i was gonna say bryson brown my bad <laughs> also shout out. i also admire bryson brown we both got a shout out from alisa D. I know dude such a good joe episode rogan, yeah on the joe rogan show go check out alisa deke's uh, special i Dom can't wait Domino I haven't, yeah i haven't watched it i'm yet. almost done with it it is very very such very a well good storyteller very well done yes um but, uh, fuck was i saying Oh, Bryce, Bryce Mitchell. Mitchell. Okay. He, he's so like, um, he, he's a smart kid. He understands economics. He, he's all about the libertarian Rand Paul. And he's very like dubious of the government. Yeah, small government. And he, he predicts that he's like, economy is going to get way worse. He's like, I think we're going to go into the great D. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're going to wish for the 70s, you know? Um, he reminds me of like how maybe our grand grand. Well, you're you grew up a little bit more rural, yeah. so even like your father totally. and, and how y'all grew up. But yeah. like for me, it was my grandparents where it's like they're from a different era, you know, they're from a different country, different culture, but different era in terms of like just economics of like back then if there was a plague in mm -hmm. your crops and if uh, you know government subsidy, all that shit still applies to ag agriculture and all that. But to be like, and and Welito had the well in La Noria. He would pump water out the ground, yeah. and there were chickens, and there were goats, and there was this, and there was the cow, and there was the the the, the corn and shit growing back there, and and you had a fruit tree and a this and a that, and and he rigged a, a, a car battery so they could have some electricity, and he made it to where it's like they were taking a shower, but there was like this above ground yeah. little, little tanque, yep. and, and there in the middle of nowhere, none of the neighbors had electricity, none of the neighbors had none of that shit. Uh, well, you still had an outhouse and the back you know but but it's like we have to start thinking sometimes like our grandfather we got to start thinking sometimes like our grandparents because the we're in uncharted territory but what's going on like america doesn't produce like it used to we don't have this manufacturing base like we used to well, remember i said this last week when i made, i referenced that clip i saw where the guy said like we we, we progressed to getting a little too emotional and a little too uh, uh empathetic and need and need to go back to being a little bit more like our grandparents practical very practical very uh very let's let's actually do stuff that's going to help move things forward a lot of things i think and i'll leave it with this a lot of things going on right now i feel like are only good for this moment and don't do any, they don't benefit the future uh, period. Like not just our future kids or generations or the world, but just at all. It's just like, what's good for right now? Like who's the group you want to appease? You know, the trans, the gay, the whatever. You mean whatever. how politicians be just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. None of this is pushing the, 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 the country forward. It's all just like for today and there's no long game. It's all very short-sighted. Yeah, and then it's up to the American people to decide which politician is just trying to say some fly rhetoric and then by the time y'all start to see the repercussions of that they're already done moved on to a different position they done moved up ran for president or yeah, whatever yeah meanwhile you got somebody else who might be like no 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 i could have been making billions running my golf courses 100%. i'm over here losing billions yep losing my reputation y'all lying on me spying on me everything else lying on me spying no, on i'm talking me. about fuck they lying on me and spying on me all right we done said bye about 10 <laughs> times jorge ventura drop it on them all right, guys, quick break. We want to talk about Friends of the Podcast. Uh, this is actually like the fuel source, the energy source, the focal source of the podcast, Magic Mind. They're showing so much love to all the members of the Thea. Uh, they decided to continue to work with us. They dig the podcast. They like that uh, people are digging Magic Mind and all that it has to offer. Don't forget to shake it because you get all that good green stuff at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's very natural, so you got to shake it, dog. Where can they go? You go to magicmind.co forward slash chingo. When you check out, use promo code chingo. You get 20% off. And if you subscribe and you join the subscription where they send it to you every month, 
Bro, how much percentage you get out? 40%. 40, the big 40. Yeah, man, it's a really good deal. Actually. That's damn near half. Yeah, it's a really, really good deal. I don't miss a day. Don doesn't miss a day. You take yours every day we record and any chance that you have it, you take it on the road with you. It really is a fantastic product. Yeah, so uh, it's, a, it's a game changer. We really, we really dig it. Uh, it's just a little shot. It's a herbal supplement. It's just two ounces. You get to do more and stress less. And they're friends of the podcast. And they're hooking up listeners of the podcast. So you got to support friends of the podcast. Get my skittles. Magicmind.co forward slash chingo. Get 20% off or use the promo code chingo. You get 40% off if you're joining the subscription. Boom. Sass. Ladies and gentlemen, special guest via Zoom, Jorge Ventura. How's it going, brother? It's good to be with you guys, man. So you're you're always on the ground reporting, being a real journalist, unlike what we have in this country uh, mainly. So where are you and where are you headed? Where are you coming from? If you can disclose that, yeah, yeah, of course not. Your exact coordinates. <laughs> yeah, I just I just got back. Uh, I'm in I'm in Dallas right now. I'm I'm actually set to do some Blaze TV media from our coverage in Uvalde. I just got back from Uvalde last night, and uh, it really guys happened so unexpectedly, just because. Our team was in Eagle Pass, and we were also reporting in Pedras Negras, Mexico, due to Title 42 coming to an end. Well, as so we thought, right? So we were there doing our, our border coverage, and uh, we were actually in the Mexican side when we found out of the shooting. And that's when we basically, you know, crossed over to the U.S. as fast as we could and went straight to Uvalde. And, and basically, we covered it since day one up to Biden's speech yesterday. So what did, what did Biden have to say? I didn't see it. Well, Biden, um, he didn't he didn't give a speech. Essentially, what he really just did is just visited the families. The first thing he did when he got to Uvalde was he went to Rob Elementary School. He dropped some flowers off with the first lady, paid respects. Uh, Governor Greg Abbott actually showed up um, aside um, Biden. So they were actually together. After that, Biden then went to um, to a mass at uh, I believe it was a Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Uvalde. He went to mass there. And then after that, he visited the victims and, and the families and uh, basically just spent as much time with the victims and families as much as he could before heading back to uh, Washington. So he, he didn't really do any media. He didn't, he didn't take any questions. It was strictly just focused um, focus on that. We didn't. Re so Chingo and I haven't actually gotten a chance to, to do a podcast about this. This actually happened right after we had recorded the last time we saw each other in studio. So you're the first person we get to kind of talk about this. So my question is, like, when you came, you were on the Mexico side, you heard what happened, you came over. What, uh, what did you hear initially? And then what ended up transpiring when you got there? That's actually a great question, man, because initially the reports that we got was it was an illegal immigrant being chased by Border Patrol who then like crashed by a school and then jumped into the school but and also was armed. So first, it was really mixed, right? So first we're like, wait a minute, an illegal getting chased and he's armed. And then we got the reports of two deaths at the school. So that's all we actually knew. And then we get to Uvalde. And when we were, in, we're on the ground, that, that number started to jump. I believe when I got on the ground, it was, it was like five to six deaths. And then cl it climbed up to like nine. Um, and then obviously when we got there, we, we learned right away that it wasn't the case. Actually, I interviewed a witness right away. I think we were the one of the first media, or if not, where a witness told us that when Salvador Ramos jumped into his car, um, he already heard the gunfire because he, he lives like a couple blocks away from his house. So he heard when he shot his grandma sees this guy jump in the car, drive down the street, crash his truck. And my witness says that he came out and saw all of that. And that when Salvador Ramos came out of his truck, no one actually reported. We were, we were one of the first Washington Street uh, Journal confirmed it later. But then Salvador Ramos actually started firing to, towards a funeral home. There was actually two employees from a funeral home that heard a crash. So they, they come out to all the commotion and then they had shots fired their way. Those employees ran into the funeral home. And then, you know, eventually Ramos make it to in, into the school. So at first, man, it was very mixed. Like I said, we, we, we thought it was an illegal running from a, from a border patrol at first. Man, that's crazy. Like, that's not that I my you know, how you always say, like, people say, like, if you tell somebody's story, you know, you give it a couple of hours and it's completely different. How, how, oh, did, you, how did you get the initial story? Do you remember, like, who broke it to you? I, th I think it was just other reporters sitting in our way. But it was also like, you know, you go on Twitter, it was like um, all like the credible news sources, like a, like a breaking 911. Even they even they they put it out. I just think information was was going so fast. No one knew exactly what, what was going on. And like I said, w once we got there, we started learning that, that it wasn't the case. and started breaking it down. And um, to be honest, man, it's just like almost like every single day after that, it just, uh, it just seems like the story got crazier. Then then the thing that kind of added another twist to this whole story, even though it's already crazy enough. 
was uh, the police's response, right? The 24 hours after the shooting, you had Texas uh, Department of Public Safety say, hey, when Ramos got to the school, he engaged with the campus resource officer. So we thought, okay, okay, you know, Ramos got there, shots fired between him and the campus resource officer before he gets into school. 24 hours later, that same Texas DPS director who said that had to actually retract that and said, oh, Ramos got there and there was no engagement. So right there, that also kind of like had him, you know, for us in the media was like, wait a minute, why, that's such a big lie. There has to be other things you guys lied about in the response. And that's when, you know, the whole started getting poked. So this story, man, just every single day got more kind of crazier as it unfolded. Yeah, man. I'll be thinking uh, disinformation sometimes, bots with rumors. And then not to mention, it looks like they're trying to get their story straight. You have too many people getting on the podium with the cowboy hat. It's like, okay, the governor, okay, right. who told the governor? Who are you, a DPA? Okay, who was there? You know what I mean? You know, so... It's like um, uh, a fog of war, mm. but it just seems like if people have not noticed, it's like you're a combatant in, in an information war all the time. And it's like, who's benefiting from muddying this up so mm. much? And like, wh how do these rumors begin? Because there was like, he had body armor. Wait, no, he didn't. No, he did, but right. they didn't have the little things inside. And it's always like... And, 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 and Jingle, I, I got on the first day, I got information that the grandma died and then like 24 hours later we find out that the grandma's not dead and she's actually surviving yeah <laughs> so it was it was, it was so like fluid. it was like with the ukraine thing goes to kiev and uh, you know and then the the island snake island they were like fuck you russia and then it's like wait no they're alive they just gave up you know what i mean Dude, this story was more fluid <laughs> than like west coast liberals <laughs> <laughs> did it land did it land did it stick man hold on man um <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen dj producer big rod <laughs> yeah. no nah, but no but like you know, we, like like Rob said, we have not touched on, like, like I know at one point I want to play the clip of uh, of Trump reading the names of the victims. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, like the gun reform and the gun the control debate, that could be, that's a whole nother episode. Yeah. Um, Pobrecito, you know, the community, this is our home state. You know, anytime it has, it pertains to kids, like, like, for example, I tweeted, um, this is why t Twitter sometimes is like the gates of hell, <laughs> because I saw this meme that, that had the face of the, the Democrat shooter that was trying to shoot at the softball field where the Republicans were playing softball in D.C. like a couple years back. And the meme was basically like the photo of the guy. And it said, when this dude went to uh, shoot up Republicans, no Democrats were calling for gun control or gun laws. Right. Yeah. And I was like, huh, that's that's kind of a good point. Like, why do they? You do that why are they weaponizing our empathy and why are they trying to use tragedies all the time to snatch up guns you know and i retweeted i was like i gotta like this meme and then somebody of course it might have been a bot like jesus christ chingo these are children and i was like whoa whoa i'm not saying nothing bad about the victims i was like okay shit delete because y'all <laughs> misinterpret stuff what question to you Jorge? like to this day now it's been that, that happened wednesday right of last week it was um, um, Tuesday. Tuesday of last week. So we're, we're about a, a week out. Is there any yeah. information that has transpired that's completely different from what... I, I guess, where's the clarity? Let me restart. What was the biggest confusion, and what could you clear up that people still may not know? Yeah, so, so I think some of the, the biggest confusion was... Um, first, it was just like the, 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 the police response. So initially, like I said, first we thought that a campus uh, resource officer engaged a shooter. Then we find out that he didn't. Then we find out that when Ramos crashed his truck, that Ramos basically kneeled down next to his truck and the campus resources officer drove past Ramos and that Ramos was actually outside for a whole 12 minutes before he enters the school. He enters the school through an unlocked door that a teacher prompt open 11 minutes prior. Um, Ramos enters the school and, uh, you know, he starts basically, you know, shooting, gets into the, to the, to the classroom. We ha we then have the the, the thing is, is is there was there was so much law enforcement it was almost confusing right because you had DPS in there, you had the county sheriffs, you had you you've all day you've all day police. Um, Ramos uh, was inside a classroom and according to the, the reporting that we we got now there was 19 officers in a hallway basically approaching the, the room uh, exchanging fire back and forth according to resources that that I uh, sources that I have. Two of those uh, officers in that in that in the hallway of 19 were got hit, um, but basically they were they were pursuing the room. There was an on-campus 
Oh, uh, not on, on campus. It was on commander scene officer who then made the decision that it was a barricaded suspect. This is according to them, a barricaded suspect. So they had to wait for an additional team, like a tactical unit from Border Patrol and an additional equipment like a ballistic shield. The Another source said, um, and this is also confirmed with other reporters, that this took so long that the border tactical unit actually disobeyed the commander and said, we're going in there. And they, they, they neutralized the shooter, but the shooter was in there for roughly one hour, according to some documents leaked. The Washington Examiner actually even reported that there was parents in the parking lot begging up to 40 minutes mm. for the Texas law enforcement to get a, to neutralize the shooter between 12.03 to 12.46, 43 minutes. 911 dispatchers fielded numerous calls of kids inside classrooms begging the police to come in there. Um, so it was a tactical border unit that finally neutralized, neutralized the shooter. The thing that, that is important here is when it comes to school, to uh, kids in schools, it does not matter if the subject, if, if the suspect is barricaded or not, you have to go in there guns blazing. According to their own documents that we got, it's all leaked. It's not even like a secret anymore. It's all over Twitter now. Their own training says when it comes to, to, to school shootings, particularly to kids, Time is of the essence. Time is, according to their own guidelines, it's so important that if you're an officer and you arrive there, let's say, I, let's say I just arrived there with a pistol, I can't even wait for another officer or tactical unit. It's going in there now, and it, and it says you if, if you have to put your your life on the line, well, that's what you what you sign up for to do. And it, it's it says in the documents that if you're not willing to risk your life for the kids, then just choose another career field. This one ain't ain't for you then. And so according to their own documents, you've all the police and, and, and that school district police, they violated their own protocols. Um, it's been a failure in their response. Um, and we've been we've been reporting on that. And I think um, I think law enforcement made it a lot worse when they lied about the campus resource officer and all that stuff. But I mean, to have 19 officers in that hallway who couldn't take out an 18 year old. Look, I get it. He has an AR-15, but we're talking about an 18 year old kid who's not trained for this type of stuff. Um it's. I think it's a total failure from the from the from the from the police response. I heard that they had. I think you might have mentioned this that supposedly they didn't have the uh, ballistic shield. They had to wait for a nearby, like for an hour away or something like that. Yeah, and and the border tactical unit got so mad at that at waiting and waiting. They disobeyed and just went in regardless. Um, another freaking crazy story was I believe it was Angelie Rose Gomez, a mother. She was 40 miles away when the shooting happened. A family member called her. This mom drives 40 miles, gets to uh, Rob Elementary School, then is uh, begging the police officer to do something. She's actually put in handcuffs by the federal marshals. Angeli actually knew some of the local officers. I mean, you've all these such a small community, right? Everyone knows everyone. So she knew a couple of the local officers, convinced the local officers to free her from the handcuffs. She gets freed from the handcuffs jumps the fence and saves her two kids. There was an off-duty Border Patrol agent who was getting a trim at a local barber shop. His wife calls him he uh, to basically go save their kids. He freaking picks up the barber's shotgun. shotgun. Yeah, goes. I wanted to ask you about that, if that was real. Well, the thing is, what the misinformation part is that he engaged the shooter. He never engaged the shooter. He just went in there and saved his kids, and I believe he got like 12 other kids out of there. The, the people that did engage, like I said, is the border tactical unit. But you had an off-duty office, uh, border patrol agent, man, that was literally getting a trim and did that. But, I mean, that, that mom, I think that story is And he was forty And he was 40 miles away as well, right? Oh, yeah. He was 40 miles out, and the mother was 40 miles out. Dude. It's, it's like, why didn't this department have those tools? Like, I heard they couldn't get in as well that they needed. Like, because here's the thing about the misinformation and the rumor. It's like you see the meme or you'll see the tweet of like, um, you know, I haven't heard anything about what medicines the kid was on. And like the feds knew about them. Yeah. Do we know much about this suspect or this guy, this criminal? So there's still more more information um, coming out about this guy uh, from other uh, the report, reports so far and like um, other independent reporters. I know like Ali Bradley, who's been doing a good job interviewing some of his family members. Um, you know, you, you have this, this kind of character who's been, um, has a, has a bad childhood, doesn't have a good relationship with his mother. His mother was actually on drugs. Um, so his, his grandmother took him in. 
Um, one one local uh, TV station got an interesting report with an individual who said that, that Ramos was always known for abusing and killing animals and that he was uh, getting in fistfights quite early. Um, I was also um, we also got a report that about two months ago, Ramos had an altercation with his mother where, where eight uh, Uvalde police officers actually had to arrive to the scene. So he was just kind of this odd character. He was working at a Wendy's, but he's been unemployed for over a year. So another huge question mark is how can a kid who's socially awkward, who has, doesn't make any money, uh, could afford this amount of weapons, the ammo? Um, who also got it for him? That's as we're still kind of working, um, you know, working working through that. But everything that we know, um, he's just an off character. The big thing for me as well, and someone pointed it out, I think it's a good point. Is you know, Facebook is very quick. If you say something about the election, you say something about that vaccine right now. They are very quick on flagging that. I mean, to the point where it, it, they flag in like milliseconds. This kid posted three times on Facebook. I'm going to I'm going to shoot my grandmother. I'm and in the, the other post. I shot my grandmother. The third post. I'm going to an elementary to to shoot to shoot up. And then 15 minutes later, he did that. So Facebook, with all the technology they have, they couldn't get that one. I mean, you could if I say something about the election right now, you guys would. Well, I mean. Oh my God! They'll send the police to my door. Almost, they can't. They couldn't even flag those posts by Ramos, and at least put some type of alert to local to local police. Like, hey, we just flagged this in Uvalde County, whatever. Be like, this kid said he's going to an elementary school. I don't know. I think that's a that's something that maybe could be added to the conversation. Definitely, dude. It, it, somebody, there's so many holes in the story. I mean, I know you're you're doing probably some of the best work that I've seen mm -hmm. on getting information out there. Um, what? What are the next steps you think that people in that area are going to be taking to just get down to the bottom of what happened? You know, I think obviously, obviously, guys, we all know that the police, the police department and response is going to be held accountable. Actually, yesterday it was announced that the Department of Justice is officially doing an investigation. So that will be very interesting. Um, I don't know, like how people feel about this, but I think, you know, the public is going to want to know who the teacher was that left that unlocked door that Ramos went in. Um, I believe the on commander uh, on the scene, the, the Uvalde police chief is going to have some tough questions and answers for his orders to stand down. Um, according to his own documents, he violated his own protocol. So he's going to have something to answer to P uh, Arredondo is is, 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 is his name. And he's actually tomorrow supposed to be sworn into Uvalde city council um, something tells me he will not be showing up for that swearing in uh, because he's been basically hiding from the media since the shooting. I did see Pete the day after the shooting at the Uvalde vigil. But at that at that time, we did not have the information on the role that Pete played in that. Uh, but since then, he has disappeared. He actually if you actually drive up to his his house right now, Uvalde, it's guarded by police officers at the moment. So he, he he's right now. I don't know. What he's at. I, I, I mean, I have a feeling he's not even in Uvalde. I'd be very shocked if he is. So I think he'll be held accountable. The teacher who who left that unlocked door, the whole police response. I mean, you got you got the governor pissed off. The, even the governor came out and said, "I was misled by the previous information." So you mislead the Texas governor. I mean, it's one thing to you know mislead us, the media. It's one thing to mislead the governor. Um, so that's another one. So I think all those departments. Um, I think they're going to be held accountable, and I think those ends. I think right now, see right now things are easy for them because right now it's just the media and like you know and you have the public that are angry but because just because the families are grieving right now but when the families feel when that healing process when they when they started to grieve and they, they started to heal a little bit more it's going to turn into anger and they're going to want answers and when those families are going to want answers i think things are going to get real serious i think a lot of people are going to be held accountable and will be losing their job very soon yeah man did you have any thoughts on this when this all broke out what were you doing do you remember Man, no, I don't remember exactly, but it is just, you know, so many people have kids in elementary schools. And like I said, you know, we can we can do a whole episode just on potential solutions. Like, how do we stop? And then we, you know, what I mean, but it's been politicized like crazy. And it's just very strange that everything now these days is like super muddy murky fake it's like and, and, and Chingo, i want to say this that i think it, it's, it's important i think this was this was like when i first got there man it, it, it was rough to report on like it truly hurts like 
the sources in our hospital and everything were saying that the the reason why the bodies needed DNA testing to, to be recognized is because that's how brutal these gunfire wounds were, that the bodies were unrecognizable. I, I interviewed an uncle who's who told me his nephew was at the classroom across from it, and he witnessed his teacher, the teacher get killed, and then his best friend got shot in the face. So these bodies were that unrecognizable, guys, to the to the point they needed DNA testing. Let me remind you that when the shooting happened, there were parents that did not know whether their child was deceased or missing until two in the morning outside the civic center. They were they were confirmed. That's how brutal this was. So this wasn't like, you know, that this guy was. This was horrible, man. There was actually no words of how brutal brutal this one was. This, um, and I don't know, man. This one I think stings. Especially for us who are uh, Latino, we're talking about Uvalde, overwhelmingly Hispanic um, community. Everyone knows everyone. Um, so yeah, I just want to make sure that the audience knows that that's how brutal this guy this guy was, man. Uh, you know, part of what Trump said with the solutions is like we your schools just can't be a soft target. He's like, um, I think uh, Mark Robinson said, uh, you know, we need to protect the kids as much as we protect these uh, politicians down here in D.C. with their detail. Yeah. Um, but Trump was saying, why doesn't stuff like this happen in inner city schools? Because they got all the metal detectors and officers or security. Yeah. You know, so uh, very unfortunate. Um, Jorge, how was the NRA uh, thing? Yeah, so we, we arrived there Saturday. Um, I, I just covered mostly of the protests because I wanted to understand the energy and I wanted to understand how the Texas Democrats were going to use this going forward, right? Because they're going to fundraise off this. So, you know, we got, you got uh, Lena Hildalgo, county judge, was speaking when I arrived. Beto O'Rourke uh, spoke, uh, spoke as well. They're, um, they're demanding that the Governor Greg Abbott hold a special session um, banning AR-15s, ri rising the age limit from 18 to 21, universal background checks, a longer waiting period. But there was hundreds of people out there, and um, there was a part where the NRA attendees were entering, and I got video footage where you could kind of see the protesters screaming at them, just, you know, saying all types of stuff at them. Um, but one thing that I did do is I asked a couple folks, too, I said, hey, you know, um, right now the Democrats, they control the White House, they control the Senate. In the House, you know, why do you think they haven't introduced legislation to combat gun control? And the majority of people that I spoke with, I mean, they were all stumped. They didn't even really have an answer um, to, to, to why. And I think that's also an interesting angle on this. But I think for the audience, it's important to know that right now, um, whether you're on what, you know, whether you're in the game or sitting, sitting on the sidelines, Texas Democrats are, are going to raise millions off this. And they're already on it. They're already campaigning. They're, they already are out there organizing. And and I think if the Texas GOP falls asleep, they will lose a couple seats. Or, 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 you know, that governor race might even get a little bit tighter. I know, you know, Texas has always been a Republican state, but um, it could get a little bit tighter as Beto is going to, you know, use this as a, as a political a moment. Here's what Greg Abbott, if anybody's listening from Abbott's camp, here's all you got to do. You just got to be more alpha than Beta because... Beta's whole energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, as it is, like, you're absolutely right, Jorge. Like, you know, I saw Beto, when, uh, I, I don't know if I saw the whole thing, but Beto did a speech out here where, of course, he's basically like, this is on you, Abbott. Like, you know, it's almost like you did this, you know, and, and he's like, and many people say it's too soon to talk about this. But the time to stop gun violence was when Sandy Hook, the time is now the time. And he just start naming like Santa Fe Springs out here, like on the southeast of Houston mm -hmm. and just naming every, you know, Buffalo. He's just naming everything that could have had anything to do with an AR-15 or whatever. So you're absolutely right. Like they're going to use this. To 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 be like, not only did Abbott make us freeze, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he also exactly. he also ran up in a school himself and, sh you know, did this and that. And it's like, well, well hold on. We, we got to have a discussion. But let's like you're seriously politicizing it. And I, I, there were reports. I don't know how accurate that a lot of the parents in, in Uvalde like didn't want all these politicians and their rhetoric over there yeah i can imagine did you uh jorge by chance get any any footage were you close to the situation where you, he bet the went in on um governor abbott's uh town hall or what he was doing with the locals i was actually out i was just outside doing um 
TV interviews, but I, that that moment pissed off the community. Like people weren't like we were we were interviewing Democratic voters that were like pissed off about that just because it just happened so soon. Like I said, when Beto did that, just a few hours earlier in the morning, parents barely found out that their kid was deceased. So that right there, I mean, that angered the community. And the thing is, the uh, the mayor there, Don McLaughlin has a lot of support. People love the mayor because he's like more like the, the down to earth people. He's, like, he's just like a real person. He's not like this kind of politician. And Don McLaughlin, if you guys saw that video, remember he, he stands up and he says, you, you, you sick son of a bitch. Yeah. Um, and, and, and attacked him. So the, the community is always get, was always going to have the mayor's back um, on that one. So that, that angered those folks. Um, yeah. So like back to the beta energy, like, you know, the sleeves rolled up with the little, you know, the little blue shirt and this and that. and, weaponizing people's empathy and trying to conflate something that it's like are we just not gonna acknowledge and then when you do acknowledge mental health they'd be like well governor abbott you know cut some funds and maybe fired somebody and you know put two departments made them one you know something <laughs> like what has said like they're gonna be fundraising like crazy but i guess it's more of a personal question Jorge. i know you know you don't live in in these areas or anything but just based off what you've seen do you think the fundraising is gonna make that like you even said it might make it a closer race but do you honestly believe that more texans might lean towards voting for somebody like beto o'rourke versus governor abbott you know i i really think texas in a spot it's just kind of it really matters where you live so and this is what i mean so like all these um like in south texas like like uvalde all those south texas i don't think this situation like if you're living down there says okay now i'm gonna vote democrat because all those counties in south texas overwhelmingly swung to Trump in 2020 off the issue of border security. So those folks are dealing with another issue. Like I know, I know this thing is in Uvalde, but let's not forget Uvalde is 50 miles away from the border. And I actually know Uvalde. I've, I've been there. I've, I've, I've done interviews with the mayor, knowing the community. Uvalde is one of the towns where drug smugglers run through. So that's a town that, that, that knows the, the border crisis. They support border patrol. Um, so I don't think like South Texas is going to swing off this. I think all those Latinos down there are still going to be, uh, Republicans in the GOP will still get that. I think maybe when you move closer to the cities is when you have maybe those folks who are more down the middle. Maybe that could swing. It, it, it really depends. I it's it, it's it's hard for me to like really tell just because I, I don't you know I don't live in Texas. I actually spend anytime I'm in Texas, it's all South Texas. But I think all those Latinos have, have already are going to be going Republican off the issue of the border. And let me remind people, South Texas wasn't always GOP. You know, 2016 when Trump ran against Clinton, they they all swung to Clinton like and it wasn't even close. But in 2020, just off the issue of border, all they all went GOP. McAllen voted in their first Republican mayor and Javier Villalobos. We have Meyer Flores, which is a Mexican national. She looks like she's going to win her congressional seat. She's a, she'll be a GOP. Um, so I, I think South Texas is on lock. I think maybe the folks in the city, you you're, know how city folks are, guys. Yeah, you're like Chingo Bleen at the Mali King. Even he went, uh, <laughs> Mr. Red Pill. Mr. Yeah. They Can't Deport Us Off. From the Bethel stage to RPT. Yeah, dude, uh, Bethel's people, they invited me to, like, I guess, a rally uh, before I was Red Pill. Back when I used to drink soy milk and watch The View. <laughs> 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 Don't judge. Nah. Uh, but no, um, shit, I forgot what the hell I was going to say. Well, I was going to ask you while you're thinking about that. Did you hear anybody talk? Because you mentioned oh, uh, the judge. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Oh, sorry, dude. No, you got it. All right. You mentioned, you mentioned, Jorge, that, um, you know, South Texas, they're already kind of like GOP. It's probably not going to swing Uvalde any other type of way. What I wanted to say is they're going to, this is very, you know, this is very touchy subject, but like, the left and the, the anti-gun people, anytime there is a school shooting, right? Sometimes people in that community, they get used as a pawn, you know, like the, you just hear, you know, like other people. Parkland, you know, like that little kid, David Hogg, and the ones that survived and this and that. They want to be activists now and they want to, like the little guy, he did a My Pillow. He tried to compete against yeah. My Pillow or some oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, this is a lefty pillow. And it's like, motherfucker, Mike Lindell paid his dues to make a, a gangsta ass pillow. And you just want to hop in the pillow game, <laughs> stepping on toes. <laughs> and he failed, bro. Big Listen, time. And he failed. So, so anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, Everyone listening, it's going to be very unfortunate if they take this tragedy to try to 
use the empathy against like the Dallas Lululemon moms, the suburban yoga, Katie, Texas moms, like the, the yep. moms in Sugarland, like, oh dear God, oh no, you know, because they don't know. They're just like living a cushy, isolated life and they get sold fake news on cnn yep. and thinking like well no no one needs an ar-15 and what is that for and it's like look at china look at tyranny look at australia like motherfucker this ain't for deer bitch this is <laughs> is you know what i'm saying yeah no you're right and then I, I i hate when politicians like brandon they try to spin this gun debate and it's like they can't wait you know what i mean it's just very disgusting how yeah. they're just like oh, okay you know, i think that's a great point i think that's a great point you're making and and, and let's not forget guys they're gonna use this and they're gonna have fun. they're gonna have millions coming in outside of texas like that's i think the big thing is they're gonna have millions fundraisers that are that it's gonna be money coming outside of texas and i think that's gonna you know who knows if that plays a huge role so i was gonna ask if you had heard anybody talking about because you said you when you got there uh beto i guess i'd said something to the nr at the nra event and so did the judge the, the judge uh, lena hidalgo did anybody or did you ask any questions about those two people in particular you know i i, I didn't focus on them because i wanted to i just wanted to talk to like when i interviewed people that are just say hey like you know the democrats control literally every facet of government right now yeah why do you don't think they they even make a move on this? And uh, that's where a lot of voters were just uh, completely completely stumped. You know, Lena Hidalgo. Um, for folks who don't know, she actually lied last year, and she said that the first Omicron death in the U.S. happened in her county, and we found out that wasn't true. So she's a character that um, is just you, you can't trust her. She's very establishment. She was uh, she comes up as a fake progressive. She likes to put up. She likes to make the face of oh, I'm an outsider fighting. The establishment Dems, um, if you find out who fundraises Lena Hill Doggo, she's all corporate Democrat. So she's going to align exactly with Beto on any establishment uh, de Democratic front. So you got to you got to remember, these folks are putting up a very, very, very fake front, especially Lena Hill Doggo. I, I think she's way more corrupt than Beto. I think I, I, I would I would worry about her way more than Beto. Oh, we know. We yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, we already know, bro. Um, yeah, she spent all this money on a George Floyd statue. So, look, you, you just made a good point. You said the Dems control the government. What's stopping them from putting some laws forth? Well, I like what Trump's speechwriter, the way he put it, he said they took a slightly different angle. He said the Dems control every aspect of our government. He's like, what's stopping them? This is a good point. He said, what's stopping them from spending you know, we just came up with 40 billion to Ukraine, no strings yep. attached, no questions asked. How many billions are we putting towards making sure the, ki the kids and our most precious, you know, youth are safe? Like, how do we spend some money to make the schools safer? And people laughed at him when, they, when he was throwing out ideas like maybe other teachers should be strapped. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, my God. How could he? Yeah. Fucking, uh, and then all the late night TV uh, hacks are like, uh, President Trump. Yep. Cheeto fingers and, and, you know, president, you know, you remember that teacher in eighth grade, you know, he was crazy. Do you want him to have a, a Derringer? Sounds just like, uh, uh, what's his name? Fucking, um, one of those fucking, I forgot his name. Colbert. Colbert. Yeah. Uh, Hey dude, I know you've got a lot of busy days. So, uh, what do you want to wrap up with? Where can people follow you? Where are you going next? Like, where's the, the latest news dropping from you? Yeah, guys, check me out. Um, on Instagram is, uh, Jorge Ventura TV always posting full source, great content on my Instagram. And then on uh, Twitter, we're breaking news like in real time. So if you're like, you know, one of those folks that want the, you know, breaking news real time, it's Jorge Ventura Media. Check me out there. And we're doing a lot of good stuff, guys. We've got field reporting like we're, what we're doing here. But we're also producing documentaries. I actually just wrapped up filming in Northern California about the kind of Asian drug cartels involved in the illegal marijuana cannabis industry. I think the audience will find that fascinating. We have that coming out in about a month or two. So just stay tuned, man. We're doing a, a lot of good stuff on the ground. Uh, for the next week or so, you know, guys, I'm, I'm taking a break, relaxing the body, enjoying some tequila before we get back on the field. Nice. Uh, everyone listening to the sound of my voice right now, please go follow and support everything Jorge Ventura is doing because Jorge Ramos is trash. <laughs> Jorge Ramos is trash. He's straight establishment, lefty Larry, and they're not giving you the true spill. Jorge Ventura is the future. You know, he's putting in the work. He's laying down the groundwork. He's doing he's doing the work. He's out there on location. Like, you deserve your break. And be a force multiplier. Everybody go reshare his stuff. Show his clips to your family because that's, yep. how, you're gonna, that's how you're going to get some, some actual journalism, like, 
uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, like not etiquette, but like, like a purist. Like, I'm going to find the story, mm -hmm. not uh, Pfizer doesn't want us to report on some stuff or how, what are our donors and, you know, who, who, what did Jeff Bezos say? Can we put that on this paper? Jorge Ventura is going to change his ad handle to Jorge the Future Ventura. <laughs> yeah, dude. You know, like Walter Cronkite. Like I picture you with like you know, once the gray hair starts to come in, you start looking more like me. People are gonna be like, I remember Jorge Ventura when he was out there in, in you know on the South Texas yep. covering the story. So we we appreciate you. Thank you, and please don't stop. Yeah, brother. Thank you. No. Hey, I appreciate appreciate you guys big time, man, for giving me a, a platform and, and communicating this back to your audience, especially a story this big, man. It was so important to get the exact correct details and look we're still waiting for more details but hey appreciate you guys man lo lo love coming on and next time in, i'm in houston man we're, we're doing some uh, tequila shots. oh hell so. yeah godspeed bro all right brother safe travels Take care. safe travels